Hi, I'm Mark Gibbs with The Great Outdoors Nursery in Austin, Texas. And one of the most common questions we get throughout the year, no matter what time of year, is the proper way to plant something. So we just want to give some, a few tips here and a few pointers on bringing up your success ratio when you are planting something new. So in this case, one of the first things we start out with is whatever the size of the plant's going to be. This is a one gallon plant. So one of the most important things is people tend to dig a hole to China and you really don't need to. It's better if the hole is a little wider than it is just so deep that you're just going to go to Guam. It doesn't, make, it doesn't help the plant that much. So on a one gallon, typically I'll recommend about one hand width wide, wider than the container. You can do that with the five gallon as well. Uh, and then when you get up to 10 gallon, 15 gallon, 30 gallon, you want at least two hand widths. When you get to 45s and bigger, you're going to want at least three hand widths, if not four. It's kind of a personal judgment depending on how much rock you run into, but minimum one, maximum four. Pretty easy to measure just doing a hand width. So this is a one gallon. The other most important thing is it doesn't need to, the hole doesn't need to be any deeper than the plant is in the container that it's already in. So a lot of people, again, dig the hole depending on the size of the container as opposed to the root ball size that's in the container. So we would just want to dig the hole deep enough where it's just going to end up at the same height that it is in the container. So I've already loosened this up a little bit. One of the other ratios that we look at when we dig the, dig the hole and take out that soil, we want to keep 70% of the existing soil and amend with 30% new. This is allowing that root system as, it, as it's beginning to expand to acclimate to what it's going to run into. If you do an over amending when you plant something, you basically created a pot in the ground and the plant is so spoiled that when it gets to the native soil, it turns back on itself. And I've literally seen plants girdle themselves to death in a hole because it was so over amended that the roots never acclimated to what they have to penetrate into. So just remember 70-30 is a really good rule of thumb. 70% existing, 30% new. This is a flower bed that was here when we bought the property umpteen thousand years ago. So the soil is actually pretty beautiful. I'm still going to amend with 30% new. If you're not amending with a soil that has a lot of nutrition in it, uh, I'm just using a landscape topsoil for this. Um, you'll definitely want to make sure that you either add some happy frog, which is going to have beneficial mycorrhiza. That's going to get the root system expanding. Or you want to do the microlife, which is going to have beneficial mycorrhiza that shake hands with the dirt. So there's two different ones. You can't use them at the same time. But on new plantings, I like to start shaking hands with the roots just to let them settle down and begin expanding early on. Um, that's going to help with your nutrient uptake and your water uptake. So we've got our hole pretty good here. Now another huge thing that you can do to make sure the plant's going to survive well is the way shovels are made, we get this cone down in the bottom of the hole just because of the way shovels are made. I brought a sharpshooter out here. On smaller plants, I like to use the sharpshooter just because it's narrower. You get a quicker penetration and a lot deeper, a lot easier. Um, so where we've got this cone in the bottom of the hole, when we get this emptied out, one of the best things you can do is take some of your new soil, mix it into some of that existing, and make a little mountain. Just a nice little mountain down there. So what this is going to do is, when we go to put this guy in there, it's going to land on that little mountain and push down and come flush and it's not going to drop down into that cone over time. What will happen is if you haven't filled in that cone, you begin watering and the air releases from that soil and the crown of the plant will slowly drop down into where that cone got made. And then all that water, when we have excess rain or you're watering, it's just ponding on the trunk and it's not releasing and running away and getting the rest of the root system. So you can have some rot and some damage if that crown does get below grade once it's in the ground. So this is just a great technique I learned when I was younger. It sure does help. We're going to give the plant a nice little tickle here. Loosen it up some. If it's a bigger plant, you can roll it on its side to loosen it up. That's always a great technique. Pop it out of here. 
As you can see, we're starting with this plant already moist. That's another important thing. Water your plants the night before you're gonna plant them. So they're not gonna be stressing with dry soil. That dry soil, when you go to tickle this, that dry soil will actually shear the roots and we don't want that. We wanna just tickle them to get them to turn away. This is all old fertilizer that's in that soil from a previous planting. And then another thing to remember, if you're planting in wet soil, you want to have one of these guys handy. We have very clay-based soil here. So when you go in with a shovel in wet clay soil, it shears the back of this whole surface. And when you shear the back of that surface, and this starts to dry out during the summer, it becomes like a concrete wall. It's ridiculous. And then the roots can't permeate at all. So if you've got the shearing because you didn't have a choice, it's just extra moist in there, you want to have one of these guys to come through and make some claw marks through that surface. You can see it breaks through and it makes these ridges through that wall that you're going to have if it ever dries out too much. And the roots can get through that little pore that you've just made without getting blocked off when that's been sheared. So it's a great little technique to get those roots to continue to spread. So I've put in a little bit of the soil mixed with the native. A lot of people ask, how do you know a 70-30 ratio? I've been doing it a while, so it's kind of easy for me. If you want, you can take your plant out earlier, fill up the bucket with 70% of the native stuff as it's coming out of the hole, and you know what your 30% replacement's gonna be. It's just kind of an easy way to do some of the math. Now, I'm using the Happy Frog. This is the all-purpose. They do have a jump start, but I like the all-purpose. It's just got a little bit more nitrogen in it. It's gonna have the beneficial mycorrhiza for the root system. A little chart on the back of here is gonna give us how much we need to put into the hole. So this guy is about a foot, we'll say just under a foot. So I'm gonna use about one cup. And again, I don't have a measuring cup up here, but one cup for me is pretty much two to three big handfuls. I'm gonna sprinkle that all around this first layer, kind of stir it in a little bit. I'm going to check my plant. I did get a little deeper than I wanted to. So I'm going to work with my mountain. Get my mountain up a little bit more. Here's our ground level to the sides right there. That's looking great. I'm going to take this, splinter it all around with my Existing soil that came out of the hole. I'm going to do another big fistful. Sprinkle that all the way around there. And now this is another great trick that I love. I'm only going to put in half of our soil. And I'm not going to come in and stomp this down. I'm just going to use my fingers, get some of the air pores out of there. And now I'm going to come and I'm going to water it since it's half planted. Two things this is doing. It's getting that soil down into those roots that we already tickled and exposed. And it's also getting that cone to start sitting down that we made, that little mountain. It's getting that to sit down a little bit. This is going to tell us pretty early on if we're going to be dropping down. And it's a lot easier to raise the plant up at this point than have it fully planted and then all of a sudden see it disappear. So this is a great way to get that plumb line early on and also know that you've got this root ball super soaked. So you can see how much that soil level dropped, but our plant is staying nice and even with the soil surface. So I'm gonna come in. the rest of our mix here. Oh. So we've got this nice and smoothed off. And the last step is we're gonna do a slow watering and then one more even after that. This first one, we're gonna go around that edge. Kinda of like to break the stream a little bit You've got one of those little heads on there, you can do that. We want to see how that 
how much it's going to drop down. I'm going to do a second one. Good flood. Good flood. Got a little running off over there. So at this point, you could come in with your mulch now. Again, you can see I'm not cramming all this down. I want the soil to go down with the water and settle in and lock up on its own. I'm going to do a couple more waterings. Some people will put some root stimulator in the water and that's fine. Uh, the root stimulator has a pretty, you know, heavy analysis. So that's why I don't do this when I've already done the happy frog. The happy frog is going to activate fairly soon. So we don't want it to be too strong. When the happy frog is waning, which will be about 60 to 90 days, then you could come in and do another just liquid douse if you want an immediate hit and it's looking a little rough. But you wouldn't do them at the same time. You would do one or the other, but not both. So it looks like She's staying nice and plumb, really nice and plumb. And I'm gonna finish this whole gallon of water on her. And then we'll make a mulch donut later on to keep that water captured around the top. And from here on out, we'll just get out of the way and let her grow.